get ready, because in this Chalk Talk, we're turning up the heat. That's right, we're cranking the thermostat to 99 and getting ready to get sweaty. It's the Chalk Talk equivalent of, uh, hot yoga. If you thought designing industrial control and monitoring systems was fun in an air-conditioned cubicle, just wait. <laughs> Okay, not really. But sometimes you or your system needs to know the temperature, and that means interfacing to thermal sensors. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. When you're designing an industrial system that needs to monitor temperature, or any of a lot of other sensor-related things, for that matter, you have to find a way to get from the analog world of the sensor to a stream of bits, suitable for consumption by your binary-based system. My guest today is Sean Long from Maxim Integrated, and we're going to talk about methods of interfacing to temperature sensors, both local and remote ones. Hey, before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can take a short little survey to enter to win one of 25 Max 31 855 and Max 31 865 P mods courtesy of Maxim Integrated Products. You can also download a free handbook entitled Thermal Management Handbook. Welcome, Sean. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Amelia. Pleasure to be here. So our goal today is to learn how to get to market faster with industrial sensor applications. And we're going to be using temperature measurement as an example. But the concepts we're dealing with are really applicable to a wide range of sensor types, right? Correct. I mean, with any industrial application, you're faced with a case where you have a number of different physical variables, mm -hmm. different types of sensors, which we need to convert, measure, and then through some sort of compute environment, decide what we want to do with some outputs. Sure. And this diagram here just shows an example of a digital control loop, which is essentially an industrial control system, mm -hmm. and a combination of either local or remote sensors, depending on the type of measurement you're doing. Great. Okay. So, Sean, can you give us an example of a high-level view of what a typical sensor looks like? Definitely. If you think of the sensor, many types of sensors, that's going to convert the physical variable into some sort of electrical voltage or current. Sure. That voltage or current, we need to do some sort of signal conditioning and some sort of conversion. Okay. So typically some sort of amplifier, A to D converter type of analog front end, that's going to be used before it gets passed on to the microcontroller or FPGA. Right. And then if it is a remote sensor, typically over a mile or two potentially from the control unit, you'll have a control loop to transmit that data from the sensor environment to the control environment. Okay, so I know there's a lot more data in your thermal management handbook, but since we're gonna be talking about temperature sensors, can you give us a quick overview on the two main types of temperature sensors? Definitely, I mean, the two main types which we'll talk about here are really the thermocouple or the RTD types. Okay. So thermocouple, most folks are familiar with them. Essentially, it's two different metals, and the heating effect produces a voltage, and that small voltage is what we're going to condition and convert, and from that, deduce the temperature. Okay, so tell us about the other type as well. So the other type is called an RTD, or resistance temperature detector. Typically, there's two popular types, the PT100 or PT1000. Okay. And the number refers to essentially the resistance at zero degrees C. Ah, all right. And as you can see, as the temperature changes, the resistance varies. And this is relatively linear. And from this, we're able to deduce what the temperature change has been. Okay. Typically over a fairly wide temperature range from maybe like minus 200 up to 850 degrees C. Wow. Whereas thermocouples maybe go a little bit higher, maybe up to over 1000 degrees C. So you have a choice of sense you want to use depending upon your application. And we can look up more about this in the handbook, right, Sean? Definitely. The thermal management handbook from Maxim goes through a broad range of applications, not just thermocouples and RTDs, but all types of sensors and applications related to this very common application. Fantastic. A great resource for engineers to go to. Great. Okay, so I've got my temperature sensor here, and it's measuring temperature. Now I want to turn this into some kind of data, right? What do we do? Okay, so if you remember the basic block diagram, we showed some sort of signal conditioning and data conversion. Yeah. Amplifier, A to D converters. Well, for these popular standards, thermocouples or RTDs, we produce some single chip solutions. Oh, okay. Ideal for engineers who want to shrink their time to market 
all they have to do is connect a sensor on one side and read out the data to the microcontroller on the other. Brilliant. Okay. Everything they need in one chip. Okay, Sean, say I've got one of these thermal couples. Specifically, what kind of single chip solution would I need? So this is an example of the MAX31855, which you could take. And again, with a single chip solution, you can replace many multiple types of components. AT converter, the voltage reference, fault detection. All of these different functions come together in a single, easy to use chip. Nice. And benefits are a number of popular thermocouple types are supported, as shown here. Okay, so what if I had an RTD? What do I need then? Well, similar to the previous product, we have a device, single chip again, the MAX31865 in this example. This will support both the PT100 and PT1000 sensors. Okay. Combination of either two, three, or four wire interface, depending upon the application. And the single chip will give the engineer everything he needs, plug the sensor in one end, read the data from the serial port at the other side. Fantastic. Okay, so if I'm ready to get started with a single chip solution, what's my next step here? You got an eval kit for me, Sean? Well, certainly we have an eval kit, and this is a pretty traditional way that most companies will promote their products. Sure. And this is great because you can really figure out what the chip does and do lots of different experiments with it. Sure. Now, I've run into this issue in the past, Sean, as I'm sure you have too. An eval kit works fine if my application is just measuring temperature, but I'm usually building more than a thermometer, right? Good point. No system is just inputs. So right. we need to be able to have a combination of different types of inputs and various outputs. Yeah. And again, this is all based around typically some sort of digital control, whether it's FPGA, microcontroller, ASIC, whatever the person is using. Right. One example of this is the peripheral modules. For example, Maxim's PMOD compatible devices. All right, slow down, Sean. Uh, what exactly is this PMOD business? Good question. A PMOD is a standard interface for a wide range of analog products. Okay. Essentially, it's two rows of signals. It's not a complicated standard like PCI Express or anything like that. Okay, Very good. simple, power and ground, and a range of signal pins. Got it. Okay. So this can connect to pretty much any FPGA or microcontroller. And those pins can drive these signals as serial interfaces like SPI or general purpose I.O. or even UARTs. Gotcha. Okay. So it's very easy to design a range of different products. And then with a number of different PMOD ports, you can essentially prototype a complete system. Analog inputs, analog outputs, interface products, whatever the system needs to become a real system and not just, as you say, thermostat. <laughs> right. Okay, Sean, specifically, what kinds of boards do you have? Well, a good example is what we call the Maxim Analog Essentials. Okay. And as you can see, there's 15 different modules here which represent a broad range of very popular analog applications. So on the input side, you know, analog to digital converters, or in the case we've been talking about the thermocouple to digital devices. On the output side, various digital to analog converters, relay drivers, you know, a broad range of popular functions which you can build your complete system around your digital control logic. Yeah, this kind of looks like a box of chocolates. I'll take that 16-bit Delta Sigma ADC and an espresso truffle, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and these are available from our sponsor, Mauser, right? Correct. As you can see, all of these come together as a single kit, less than $100. Very, very cost-effective way to prototype your systems. Fantastic. Okay, so those single-chip solutions are great if I'm measuring the temp right here, right now. But what if I'm measuring the temperature in the next room in the haunted house down the street? Uh, what do I do then? Okay, good question. Well, that's where we would look at loop power technology. Okay. The most popular type is called 4 to 20 milliamp. A very well understood and used technology in the control environment. Typically, you'll have sensors in hostile environments a long way away from the controller, maybe up to a mile or two. Okay. And in this case, we would use a 4 to 20 milliamp loop. All right, Sean, but how does this translate into an actual system? What's the setup look like? So you're going to have two or three different components to this system. Okay. You're going to have a 420 milliamp transmitter card. Now that's going to take the sensor input, either maybe an RTD or a thermocouple, mm -hmm. convert that physical property to the electrical signal and essentially do a temperature to current conversion. Gotcha. Okay. It's going to connect to the 420 milliamp loop. In this case, four milliamps would represent the low end for example, if you're measuring between 200 degrees C and 800 degrees C, mm -hmm. four milliamps would represent 200. Yeah. 
and 20 milliamp represents 800. Gotcha. Okay. But then at the other end, you're going to have to have some sort of receiving card. Right. Some sort of analog front end, which is essentially taking this current, simple thing like a resistor, converting it to a voltage, and maybe converting it through an A to D converter. Yeah. So two main parts to it, the sensor transmitter board, and then the analog receiver board. Gotcha. Okay. And when we look a little bit more detailed in terms of what are the chips or the components within here, mm -hmm. again, you see we do the signal conditioning through the op amps. Yeah. Combination of gain control or filtering, mm -hmm. data conversion with our sigma delta A to D. And then, you know, you typically need some sort of 420 milliamp transmitter. Right. Which is normally a combination of low power DAC mm -hmm. using some sort of voltage controlled current source. Okay. So, Sean, uh, what if I want to get started designing with one of these? Uh, what do I do? Just like we have a collection of single function PMOD devices, mm -hmm. we also have a range of reference designs. Fantastic. Okay. So these subsystem reference designs really take the concept a little bit further in terms of putting a number of products which work together mm -hmm. in a subsystem onto a single PCB. Nice. Okay. Much easier for an engineer to plug it together in the lab and actually prototype a complete system. Right. Yeah. So for example, the Monterey reference design, this is a complete 420 milliamp loop powered sensor. Connect a RTD sensor on one side, your 4 to 20 milliamp current loop on the other, and all of the components on here will allow you to measure temperature, do the linearization, the calibration, and then put it out onto the 4 to 20 milliamp loop. Great. But of course, you can't just have a sensor. You have to somewhere you can gather that data, make some sense of it all. Right. And an example here is Cupertino analog front end reference design. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you'll notice here, as well as the complete signal chain of amplifier and A to D and data isolation, we also use a PMOD port again. Yeah. Okay. Like the peripheral modules we talked about earlier. Advantage of this is we can plug it together in a very easy to use system configuration. So again, a much, much quicker way to get to market with a proven design. Fantastic. All right, Sean, what would the whole setup look like on my workbench for this? Okay. So Amelia, say you had a couple of boards we talked about, the Monterey board on one side, the Cupertino board on the other, interconnected by the 420 milliamp loop. Yeah. The only other equipment you need is some sort of power supply. Okay, sure. To provide the DC power. A couple of multimeters in case you want to check what the actual current consumption is. Mm -hmm. you know, in this case, you'd find that it's a lot less than the 4 milliamps or 3.5 milliamps maximum. So yeah. you'd around about 2 milliamps. We have a very low power solution here. You can connect a RTD simulator or the actual RTD itself, either option. And if you don't want to maybe use a FPGA or microcontroller, Maxim provides a small board called a Munich board, which is, allows you to basically connect to the PMOD and with some easy to use GUI software, which we provide, have a complete subsystem, easy to use, easy to prototype, and then much faster time to market and time to play golf. Fantastic. Sounds great to me. All right, Sean, let's circle back and cover some of the main points. I think I may need some more coffee today. Yeah, so what we're really trying to do is help you get to market faster. Great, Whether yes. you use integrated solutions like the single chip sensor to digital devices or proven subsystem reference designs. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you don't have to compromise. You can maximize system performance and improve your time to market. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Sean. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia. Have a good day. By the way, the Cupertino reference design we mentioned has now been replaced by the new Santa Fe reference design. Click the link to check it out now. Before we go, did you remember to click that link? There you can enter to win one of 25 Max 31855 and Max 31865 PMODs, courtesy of Maxim Integrated Products. You can also download a free handbook entitled Thermal Management Handbook. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com. 